All right, in this video, we're going to import the artwork uh, that we created at the end of our Innovus automatic place and route process. If you recall, we created a netlist and uh, an artwork file called a .gds file. Uh, yesterday, we imported the Verilog file. Today, we're going to import the netlist. And to do so, we're going to go to File, Import, Stream from the CIW window in Cadence. We're going to navigate to our stream file. In this case, I already have it pulled up. Uh, so uh, the stream file is the .gds file that we created. I'm going to have this placed into my tape out library. And I don't need to populate anything else. And if your technology is set up correctly, uh, it usually will bring up the layer map uh, as well. Uh, the layer map is uh, important because it's going to tell Cadence how to map the layers in the GDS file to layers in the uh, OA database in Cadence. You can see it just has uh, basically uh, a number, uh, a layer name, and uh, maybe a purpose. All right, I'm going to click Translate, and it should start bringing that in. You might get some warnings in this process. They're usually uh, can be ignored. If you want, you can look at the log file if you have problems. All right, so let's open up our cell. I'm going to go to Library Manager, to the folder that I uh, put it in. I put the uh, cell in, and the top cell was named pp underscore int underscore x4, and we have a layout view. Let's open this layout view. Now, if you already have a schematic imported, uh, and the layout view uh, has the same cell name, uh, and you're using layout XL, it will also open up this schematic. All right, so here you can see the schematic uh, is open. Uh, this uh, should look familiar. This is the schematic that we imported uh, yesterday. Uh, and now we also have a layout view. Now, if we actually zoom in on this uh, layout view, uh, you're going to see it brought in a number of instances. And uh, in my case, it's going to have some problems that we're going to need to fix. All right, so I'm going to uh, display more layers. Right now, I have uh, very few layers uh, displayed. Uh, I'm going to do that by clicking on Shift F, and you can see when it brought in the standard cells, it brought them in uh, with a reference that it can't complete. Now, if we uh, select one of the cells and look at the properties, uh, you'll see that the cell is pointing to a tape out, my tape out library, but uh, it should be pointing to the standard cell library. And we want to fix this for all of the cells, not just one of the cells. So I'm going to go to Tools, Find and Replace. And I'm going to set a rule to find these cells. So I'm going to search for instances. I'm going to add criteria. The first criteria I'm going to add is lib name. I'm going to add a second criteria. And that is that the cell name is going to have a standard format, at least for this particular library. And the reason I want to add this second criteria is that sometimes the layout brings in via layers that I don't want to replace. Uh, so uh, here I'm going to point to the fact that all these cell names are going to have 140 ZTL uh, in them. Now I'm going to replace the lib name with my target library. And I'm going to click Find. Now it's going to find all the cells that match. I'm going to click Select All. And I'm going to click Replace All. And what the tool should be doing right now is going through finding all of the cells in my library that match the criteria and changing them to the correct library name. And you can see that that's already been done. 
because when we click on the library, now we have our standard cells in place. And you can see that these just look like a bunch of metal uh, patterns. Um, and in fact, what you're looking at right now are fill cells. Now I need to do a couple of other things. Uh, when the tool imports pin names, or when it creates pin names, it creates them with square brackets, but Cadence is going to want those to have uh, rectangular brackets. So I'm going to search for labels now. I'm going to add a criteria. All right, so I'm searching for all square brackets in the design and I'm going to replace them with triangular brackets. And now you can see I have triangular brackets. Uh, now I uh, also like to do some things. I don't like my labels to be so big and I like them to be oriented. Uh, so uh, you can uh, use this tool uh, as well to fix those kinds of things. So for instance, I want all of my in one underscore real labels. To be oriented in a certain way. Oops, it was supposed to deselect all. Let's try that again. All right, so now I have just my labels. Uh, all of these labels are in the top, so I want to change their orientation. I'm going to rotate them 90 degrees. I want their size to be smaller. I'm going to make the height 0.1, and I'm going to make them center left. And now if we click on them, you can see it's a much more manageable format for when we start connecting this to the top level layout. All right. All right. Now, the last thing that I need to do is I need to add, uh, I, I can correct all the pins on my layout doing the same thing, but I'm also going to need uh, pins for the supplies. My supplies are called, oops. My supplies are going to go on the, uh, pins are going to go on the M2 pin layer. And I'm going to add them with a label. So I'm going to press L. And I'm going to add VDD. Changing the manufacturing grid here. So I'm going to add a VDD pin and a VSS pin. All right, now with that, all of the pins should actually be on the layout. We have supply pins uh, to let us know what the supply nets are. Uh, and so the layout should be uh, relatively complete at this point. So we are now ready to move into the checking phase of our design. Uh, first, we will do a DRC uh, to check for design rule errors, and then we'll also run an LVS uh, to make sure that the layout matches the schematic. Now, sometimes this is a bit of an iterative uh, uh, project, uh, and depending upon uh, how well your uh, layout process went in Innovus, uh, there can be DRC errors uh, that are causing LVS errors. Uh, Typically, on a design of this size, I have to fix, you know, maybe 5, 10, 15 of these errors, and, and then the design's pretty much done. Uh, you can technically fix all of the uh, LVS and DRC errors in Innovus, uh, but I am going to be doing a mixed signal uh, simulation. This uh, filter is ultimately going to be uh, positioned as part of a digital to analog converter. 
Uh, and so it's easier for me to just go ahead and bring everything into Cadence uh, and run the simulations in Cadence uh, given that. All right, so with that, I will go ahead and stop this video and we'll come back on the next video and talk about how to run the verification flow.